Okay, so I finally got it. Sorry I've taken so long to get hold of this. This is Techlast's F5. So it's an 11.6 inch 2-in-1 tablet. This has the Gemini Lake, the N4100 of course. What other CP would it have? I mean, I've been reviewing so many of them. So the reason it took so long is uh, DPD delivery is supposed to be express but it's sat in the UK for like four days and then it's sat in Spain for about five days before they finally decided to deliver it to me. So you can see it's packaged up uh, reasonably good here. i just get that out. Wow that feels so light. It's so thin and small compared to the 13 inch and 15 inch laptops I'm used to using. And under here obviously we're going to have some more things. The power adapter. I'll actually it's just a leaflet here. So this is in a quick start guide. It's in Chinese and English. Some other warranty card thing and whatnot there in Chinese. So we've got the, oh, that whole thing comes out. Okay. What is going on here? So there's the cable and, okay, they've included this, which we of course need. So that's an adapter there. That's type C to a USB 3, hopefully. It should be USB 3. And here's the adapter. So it's just type C. Now that's the only port that this has on it. It's one of those compromises because it's so thin. They haven't got any full size USB 3 ports. So that charger is rated to 12 volts, 2 amps. All right, so as I mentioned, it feels really light. And it comes in at 1.054 kilos. So that is super lightweight. That's great for portability. And take a look at just how thin this is. I just measured it. It's 15 millimeters, which is really good. So we have a little speaker port there. There's one either side, microphone either side as well. Volume up and down. Now, why we have these controls here is because the screen flips around and it becomes a tablet. Now these buttons, they feel like they could actually be made out of plastic. They move around a little bit, they're not going to rattle. And then we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support. And then on the right hand side we have that other speaker on the side. I'll check the volume of them later on in this video here. We've got a micro SD card slot, the microphone, and then we have there you can see USB 2, which is great to have. Okay, we've got two ports on this, but it's only USB 2 spec. And then we have, of course, micro HDMI. Now, this micro HDMI is 4K. And then we have a USB 3.1 port here on the side. So this is going to support data display out up to 4K 30 hertz, this one. So not the 60 like the HDMI port. And, of course, charging. So sadly, we're going to have to use hubs and dongles with this. So what I have here, this is a Type-C adapter. Now, this has USB 3 on it. It also has VGA and HDMI out and that will charge at the same time using this. So you can plug that in, use it as a dock. And then of course with a micro USB adapter. Sorry, that adapter included is micro USB 2 to USB. So this is a small little system. It looks great so far what I'm looking at. The build quality at the moment seems really good. So on the top here, this is metal. We have the Teclas logo there. There's a little tiny latch here, the little lip I should say, that you can use to lift it up. Now one-handed you're not going to be able to lift this up. There we have the uh, screen, of course, being a fully laminated touch screen. Now, this screen does have a pre-applied screen protector. You can see that is already on there. Uh, let's take a look at that keyboard. Now, this does look really good. It's a quality looking keyboard, but of course, it is 11.6 inches. Now, the screen is 1080p, but because of the smaller size, there are definite compromises with any keyboard with this size. This happens with the tablets that I sometimes review with this size, and it's been a while since I've used them. So you get smaller keys, slightly more crammed in everything. And I can see that we don't have a shortcut here for print screen on this, sadly. Now, that's one of the buttons I like to use quite often. There's no uh, page up and down, home and end keys either. We do have a number lock here, so via the function key, we can at least use like a numerical keypad here. Uh, function is for our media controls, brightness screen controls there at the top as well, and to also disable the touchpad. Now, because we do have that power button on the left-hand side, there's going to be no accidental key presses here. And you also note that we do have some status LEDs right here. So this is power on, number lock, and caps lock. And yes, one of those up-your-nose style webcams like the Dell XPS series, the 13-inch models. So it's not in an ideal location. And when you look at the screen, I think they could have somehow managed to squeeze it in the top in the proper location there, but maybe they just couldn't do that. But this screen so far feels good. I mean, the hinge, that is quite stiff. The bezels, 
top left and right, yes, they are slim, but the bottom bezel is rather large. You can see right there. Well, if, actually, if I move the camera down a little bit, you will see that it's actually quite a bit larger there. Now, this happens with all of these 360-degree style hinge ones because they have to put reinforcing in here. You still have the cables, the connectors, uh, and everything like that that's still part of that, the touch digitizer, the chip that's in there. So that's why they always have to have that larger bottom bezel, which is, is rather ugly, really, to be honest. Yes, I will power it on. I'll get to that, but I just wanted to flip it around. So there we go. It's now a tablet, a Windows 10 tablet. And in this form factor, you can see that uh, it's, you know, it, it's not the slimmest tablet out there, but you've got that fully functional keyboard there. And the build quality so far, that feels really good. Now you can use it in this mode. You can use it in what they call like a presentation mode like that. And the screen should have rotation as well. It will come into play with the accelerometer. So you could even flip it around uh, like this here and use it in tent mode. And of course, even completely light flat like this, but I don't really see anyone using the tablet, should I say laptop like this, the two in one. So I've jumped into the BIOS here straight away first because I wanted to see if it is fully unlocked, which the good news is it is, as you can see. So we've got full control here with the CPU advanced power management screen here. So you can set the power limit that you want in here. Now, Tech Class must be confident in their copper heatsink they have in here because they have set a power limit, you can see right here, of nine watts. Now nine watts, that's up from the six that is the default power limit and what Intel recommends. So being nine is gonna boost up the performance a little bit, definitely allow the GPU's clock to clock up a bit higher, hold the turbos a bit higher as well there. Okay, so we'll take a look at the screen here. I wanted to point out first the light leakage. Now this is very common IPS panels that are OGS, so one glass solution or fully laminated, you do see this. You can see the blue here slightly lighter and at the top there, more obvious. The right hand side of the screen and the left seem to be okay. That's not really affected too much. Now this is gonna vary from unit to unit. I'm seeing this also on the Chewy Lapbook SE. So the light bleed, the light leakage around the edges of the screen, very common there. You don't really see it unless you're looking at, for example, like this, a blue image, a black image, a red image or something like that. That's when you really notice it. Now I have just measured the screen. It's approximately 215 lux, which is about 15 lux brighter than the Chewy Lightbook SE. So it's marginally brighter there. But of course this too is a touch screen. So when you two do touch it, like any um, two-in-one laptop like this, you're gonna get a little bit of wobble when you touch the screen. I mean, this is gonna happen on everything. It happens on the Surface Book, all models, even the premium models. It's something you cannot avoid. Now the RAM here, I just wanted to point this out too. So it is running by the looks of it in dual channel. It's 2133 megahertz. And we have approximately six gigabytes free. I mean, I do have Edge open, but I'm not really running much. Now free storage, you get, again, approximately about 100 gigabytes free on the drive. So I'm benchmarking that. It is a Teclast branded SSD. I don't know what chips they're using it, but they could be using Toshiba or Samsung flash chips in there for that. But the speeds are okay, but the write speeds of course are low because of the size of this drive. So the 2242, the smaller M.2 SATA3 SSDs typically have poor write speeds. That's just the characteristic of them. Once you get the larger size ones, the full size 2280s, you'll find the writes are normally pretty much the same as the read speeds. Overall, the system does feel a little bit quicker and snappier over the laptop SE with its four gigabytes of RAM and the same chipset. Now you do see some of this, you can see that animation, how that sort of comes in a little bit stuttery. This is something that's been happening on the Apollo Lake, on the Gemini Lake, the same chipset, the N4100, on other tech I've reviewed. It's just, I don't know, it's a characteristic of it. It looks a little bit laggy. We can see the Geekbench 4 score here. So the single core score is a little bit lower than what I got on other devices with the same hardware, but the multi-core score is good, but it's more or less on par with those other devices there. So it's not amazing score, it's creeping up now towards Core M3, the 5Y10 in terms of performance. Now just demonstrate website performance. So Edge, it is pretty good. The scrolling is smooth, loading in, so this is the first time I'm loading my website here, and yeah, that's good. The touch response and accuracy also seems very good. It is a smaller screen, but this is gonna be great. It just makes it a very practical device, of course. Uh, when you flip it around, you can use it like a tablet. You've got various different options with something like this. So we'll load up one more page here. Lenovo Idea Pad. 
And yeah, that loads in really fast, you can see. And the scrolling, okay, images a little bit, but that's fine. So this is typical kind of performance here. This is just initial first impressions, remember. If you have a keen eye, you've probably noticed that there is a bluish tint to the white balance. And this is again, very typical of an IPS panel. Normally if you tone down the blue a little bit, then you get more of a neutral white. So let's have a look at some of my sample images. It's looking like a good screen here. It's double tapping on that. Why is that taking so long? Oh, there we go. I need to select the app first. That is why. So let's bring this up into full screen. Test that accuracy. Uh, we'll take a look at those images there. So uh, this is looking fine. It's a very nice panel. And the brightness, I mean, I do like to see at least 250 lux. But because it's fully laminated, the 215, I think it's going to be okay. But outdoor use, you may struggle a little bit. And because it already has a pre-applied screen protector, you're going to get even more reflections there too as well. But I do advise to keep it on there, especially if you are using the stylus. Now, I have noticed that the screen on the lowest setting, it does dim down okay. But really, I do like to see a lot dimmer than this for late time, nighttime use. So you can use this in pitch black environments. And this will probably actually, is going to be a little bit too bright. I'd like to see manufacturers when they really tone it down on that lowest 0% level. This one, fraction too high. Now you would have seen I do have a Teclas stylus right here. Now I thought the F6 stylus for the Teclas F6 was going to work on this. Now I'm pretty sure that this is my F6 stylus, but it doesn't seem to be because I've changed the battery. I actually walked out the door about uh, 10 minutes ago and did get a new battery for this and it doesn't work. So I don't know what's going on there. I think I've got the wrong stylus here. So sadly I will not be able to test out the stylus, but I imagine it's going to be just like the F6, so you're going to get pressure levels, sensitivity. So I've had some time on with the keyboard, done a little bit of typing on it, and I can see that for extended periods that it's not going to be the most comfortable keyboard because of the smaller size and the compromises I mentioned that they have to make because it is only 11.6 inches, this laptop. So the feedback of these keys, the travel is about 1.4 uh, millimeters. There is a tiny little bit of flex there. Now I am pushing down really hard. Uh, the touchpad as well, this is a Windows Precision Driver controlled one. The accuracy is good. The size of it is smaller. Finer movements are okay, but I've noticed that this touchpad and definitely the keyboard as well is not as good as the Lapbook SEs that I have been using. This touchpad and keyboard for me is really quite good on this model because these keys have actually got a little tiny bit of curvature to them inwards. The plastic feels better. They are backlit. This touchpad is almost double the size too as well and one of the best ones that I have used. Not fair I know to compare them because you're talking about 13.3 inches versus a very portable lightweight 11.6. But for what it is, so far the keyboard once you start to get used to it, it's alright. And definitely I have used a lot worse when it comes to the touchpad on this model. So there are a couple of things I wanted to point out, additional information here that I know a lot of people want to know. And yes, it is a power delivery supporting uh, Type-C port here. So I can use my other adapters that I have around here. It works. And I've noticed that with the supplied one from Techlast and the Type-C charger that I have, that uh, when it's around about 70, 80%, I'm getting a high pitch noise coming around here. So we're getting some sort of coil whine. And it could be connected to the screen because when I change the screen brightness, it goes through in different levels. Now I've tried to capture it on the mic. It's a very high pitched noise and my mic is just not picking it up. But it seems to happen more once fully charged. You're going to get that coil whine. Now I did test out the micro HDMI port and of course the Type-C port. So the Type-C port is going to power hard drives, external hard drives. No problem there. It will power my one terabyte drive here and I'm pretty sure it will power my four terabyte one I also have at home. So I connected up to a 4K display and you can see here resolution, yes 4K, refresh rate 60p. So yes it's running at 60 hertz, no problems there at the same time displaying 1080p on this display. Now when you are in the uh, 4K mode, when you're running 4K like on an LG TV like this, and if it's HDR it's not going to support HDR. They just don't have the support Intel with the drivers. Uh, with uh, the Gemini Lake not happening there. Another thing to note too that the desktop and everything when you're in 4k you notice quite a bit of slowdown uh, especially when you go to the start menu and pull that up it's not going to be as fluid everything's not as fluid as 1080p you notice that it's just a little bit slower because of course it's a much more demanding resolution on the integrated graphics and the chipset.
So I've flipped it round into the tablet mode now, and the keyboard when I type here is not actually going to do anything. So the keyboard has disabled itself. This is good. Now if you do a fresh install of Windows, a clean install, uh, there are some people on my forum that have reported that if you do this, then for some reason you lose this. But I think it's with the drivers. Now if I flip it around, the screen of course is then going to quickly flip around, auto-rotate. No problem there. And you can use this. You can use tablet mode in Windows that hardly anyone uses. And that hinge, well, you can see this is about the furthest you can push it back before it will flop down. Maybe a little bit more actually, about there. And if you press on it, that's not going to drop down under its own weight because it's not really that heavy, the screen there. It's metal around it, and it does have these little rubber feet too. So rubber feet here, that if it is placed, well, it's to stop it from scratching on the palm rest. That's not going to happen at least here. And let's see, about there, that's where it's going to end up falling down. Now I almost forgot to mention that the palm rest, it's not metal, it looks like it is metal, but this is actually plastic here, so like the Chewy Lab Book, they're doing this for weight reduction I believe, and the other thing too is it is a rubberized finish that's on here that does actually feel quite nice. So I have a nice little surprise here with the speakers. We've got one here and then one here as I showed you in the start of the video. And they've actually got a little bit of bass to them. They do distort a tiny little bit of 100% volume, but they are so much better than I thought they would be. When you look at it and how thin this is, I just thought, oh, these are going to be horrible flat speakers. But they're really actually not too bad considering the size of this particular 2-in-1. So I'll give you a sample of them now. Sadly, Linux support is not looking very good with this particular model, so the touchscreen does not work at all, there's no driver support for that, and for some very strange reason, the wireless, so the Intel 3165, which normally works on every single other device I've tested, just does not work here with this one. So you've got no wireless at the moment, and hopefully there's going to be a way to fix this and get driver support for that so we can at least have wireless working later work on the touch as well because it would be nice to run Linux on this machine. Taking a look at the bottom here so we've got four solid rubber feet this is metal on the whole back of it and we do have the CE mark on it for those that need that for import regulations. User accessible SSD slot so it's the M.2 spec this is 22 by 42 size so it's a little bit smaller and it even has a little LED on there to tell you that it's being powered and that's just warning you not to remove it when the system's on. Okay so to recap here my first impressions the build quality is good yes we have plastic on the top of the palm rest here and we also have metal on the top of the lid it's fully laminated display maximum brightness is 215 lux which is is okay I mean I do like to see about 250 at least but because of the full lamination, I feel it's alright. Touch response seems good. Uh, sadly, the stylus that I have uh, is not the one that's going to work on the screen. So I don't know if I'll have the stylus in time before I end up going away to New Zealand for a month. So you might not see that from me and I do apologize for that. So the touchpad, yes, it's a little smaller, but it is working really quite well with Windows Precision Drivers there. The keyboard, now typing on this keyboard... It's good, but it's not the same level as the Chewy Lapbook SE, which is, to me, by far the best on these budget laptops from China that I have used so far. But it, it does take a little bit to get used to. So we also have a smaller battery on here. So that means battery life is going to be around about uh, six hours in my testing, five to six hours. That is about two hours less than the likes of, say, the EasyBook X4 and... Uh, even the EasyBook 3 Pro, so we're getting a little bit less battery life, but it's great to have the 8 gigabytes of RAM on here It does feel quicker faster the touch screen as well is good. This machine is all about portability It's about being lightweight and a great little travel machine. I can see so far But there are those cons there So I'm getting a little tiny bit of what I would call like coil wine coming from this when I plug it in You can hear a tiny high pitch noise once the battery gets to about about 75 80 percent or fully charged that is annoying it's not happening on happening on my Chewy Lapbook SE the other thing is of course there's no full-size ports on this which will be a, a definite deterrent for some people I mean I like to have full-size ports on my tech I use because I just love to plug in USB drives because I use them a lot here with what I do with testing these tablets and things and that's why I like to have that but for some people that might not be a problem you're used to carrying around a hub 
uh, an adapter, a dongle, so it's not a big issue. It does look like a very decent machine here, and I feel for the price that uh, that I got this for, for the 329 US, that it's good for what it offers, and for those that want something to travel with. However, if you're a Linux user and you want to install Linux on this and you want seamless, flawless performance without any issues, uh, touchscreen does not work, neither does the wireless, and that could be quite an issue to get the wireless, I think, to work on this because it doesn't seem to work. There have been some people I've read on my forum that have been trying and no luck so far. At least on other devices, we do normally have the wireless AC. The 3165 normally works on everything, but for some reason, doesn't here. So hopefully, Tech Glass can fix that perhaps with a BIOS update for us. So I hope to catch you back with a full review after at least a week of testing this. Bye for now.